Welcome to Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel with Katie Lee. All the best resources you'll ever need at Genetic Counseling Awareness Channel. Hi everyone, it's me, Katie Lee, CGC, and welcome back to my channel for this week's Wannabe Wednesday. Today, I'm talking about applying to genetic counseling assistant jobs. I'm going to give you some tips on how to improve your application materials, including your resume, your CV, and your cover letter. Please like this video and subscribe if you'd like more genetic counseling content in the future. Now, if you've been following me for a couple of months, you know that we just hired our first GCA at Seattle Sperm Bank. So I posted the position and we received over 40 applicants. I could tell a lot of the applicants would have done a great job as our GCA, but when you're applying to positions that are this competitive where there's 40 applicants within just one week of having that posting out for a single position, you need to make sure that your material stands out. After reviewing 40 different applications, I thought it would be a great idea to talk a little bit about some general advice and feedback for applying to jobs. This is my biggest piece of feedback, and I'm going to say it right up front, and then I'm going to get to four other tips, but your CV or your resume for a GCA position should absolutely not be the same as your CV or resume you're submitting to get into graduate school for genetic counseling. They need to be quite a bit different just like how you would not use a resume for a job to apply to grad school. So I received a good number of four, five, six page long resumes where people wrote out every single class that they've taken related to genetics, you know, all of the requirements that you might see for genetic counseling graduate programs. And that is not what we want to see. When an employer is receiving dozens of applications, they need to be able to get to the point quick. If I have 40 resumes to look at, and I'm trying to hire a GCA as soon as possible, and I'm also trying to do the rest of my job. That means I have about 30 seconds to a minute to review each set of application materials. And if I'm looking at a three, four, five, six page document, a six page resume, and having to hunt for the things that will make this candidate a good GCA, that's not good. That means that that resume is probably getting moved to the note do not review any further pile because I can't even find the things that make this candidate stand out and that show me that they'll be a good GCA. So when you're applying to a GCA position, you want a one or two page resume, two pages max, where you are highlighting at the very top of the first page any relevant experience that is going to make you a strong GCA. I think we all know there's quite a bit of overlap of what would make somebody a good candidate for genetic counseling graduate school and what would make somebody a good GCA, but it is not the same. So you want to be sure to recognize those differences and be sure that your resume is targeted to the position you are applying to. Let's talk a little bit about how to create a resume and a cover letter that is targeted to a specific position. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to read through a couple paragraphs of the job posting for our GCA at Seattle Sperm Bank and talk about how you could work some of the details from the job posting into your cover letter and resume. So I'm going to pull it up here. And just to be clear, we've already hired someone and we're not still looking. I'm just using this as an example. Seattle Sperm Bank is seeking a genetic counseling assistant to assist two genetic counselors. This individual must have a desire to learn new material in genetics and genetic counseling and gamete donation. The individual will work closely with both genetic counselors to ensure that our donor applicants and customers receive outstanding service in a timely manner. So just from those couple of sentences, you can already get an idea of some of the key characteristics we're looking for in applicants. We want somebody who is efficient with their time. We need somebody who can provide really outstanding customer service. We want somebody who has a desire to learn, not just a willingness, but somebody who's motivated to learn new material on their own. And then I'm going to skip down to the position description. The GCA will assist with tracking ongoing genetic testing, responding to emails, case preparation, and attaining family histories, contacting potential donors as needed to gather additional family history information, and taking on miscellaneous projects as needed. So that gives you an idea of exactly what the tasks are. After reading a listing like this, it should be very clear to you what specific traits, skills, and experience you want to highlight in both your cover letter and your resume. I always think when applying to jobs that a quality over quantity approach is going to be best. Now, there will sometimes be jobs that have so much overlap that you can almost use the same CV, the same cover letter with just some minor tweaks. But for the most part, you should be making some pretty significant changes each time you submit a resume and a cover letter to address the needs of the company and the skills that they're looking for. 
So if I just read this posting and I'm looking for a GCA position, I would be thinking, what experience do I have that demonstrates my organization, my attention to detail, my knowledge of genetics, my, um, my customer service skills, my willingness to learn, my ability to work on a team. And I'd pick whichever of those seemed the most important in the job posting and be sure to highlight those, especially in my cover letter. All right, so let's get into the four quick tips for applying for a GCA position. And really, you can use these when you're applying to almost any position. The first is the one that I already touched on, that your resume cannot be too long, and it needs to highlight at the very top of the first page the most relevant experiences. So for a GCA position, one like ours, where you're interacting with the other staff at Seattle Sperm Bank and you're interacting with patients, for me, it's actually really important to see that somebody has excellent communication skills and customer service skills. That might mean that they worked at an ice cream shop or a coffee shop and were regularly dealing with customers that are sometimes difficult. That could mean working at a clothes or a retail store. That could mean working at a call center. There are so many different jobs and experiences that different individuals will have that can highlight their customer service skills and their efficiency. Um, you know, working in a fast paced environment, that type of thing. But a lot of people I found had them listed on their fourth or fifth page of a lengthy CV and maybe didn't even include any bullet points to describe exactly what they were doing at the position because it wasn't directly related to genetics. But that's okay. We want to see customer service skills. It doesn't necessarily have to be related to genetics because again, you're not applying to a genetic counseling position or a research position. This is a administrative assistant position essentially. So be sure to keep the resume short and to highlight the most relevant experiences first and include enough bullet points about those experiences so that the people reviewing the application understand how it is relevant to the job you're applying for. Tip number two is to use keywords that you found in the job description or synonyms for those keywords. So when you're listing out different positions on your resume that are relevant to what you're applying to, you want to use the words that you heard or synonyms of those words in your resume. In the job posting for Seattle Sperm Bank's GCA, we said you would be working closely with two genetic counselors. So use the word, you know, teamwork or working with others as you're describing one of the positions you had in the past. Think about which position you displayed good customer service skills in or effective communication or attention to detail. And and make sure you work that into the bullet points where you're describing your role in any unique position. That way, the reviewers can see that quickly that you do have those skills that they're looking for. Tip number three, your cover letter should not be a summary of your resume. Instead, your cover letter should highlight one or two relevant experiences that demonstrate one of those skills that we are looking for as the hiring company it seemed like the majority of cover letters were just summaries of what was already written on the resume. Things like, from 2015 to 2018, I worked for a research lab that focused on genetics and Alzheimer's. Well, I could already see that from your resume, so you do not need to tell me any of that in your cover letter. Instead, I want you to pull out one or two relevant experiences, go into a little bit more detail for a couple of sentences that explain how you've demonstrated one of those skills that the hiring company is looking for. Some cover letters I read did give some really nice examples of things that a applicant did at a previous position, but they might not have been relevant to our position. For example, a cover letter that went into what type of bench work somebody has done and their wet lab experience and their chemistry experience, that's great, but that is not at all relevant to the GCA role. So those types of cover letters, I can tell it looks like they were created for a different position or that the individual doesn't really understand the role that they're applying to or know how to target their cover letter to that position. Cover letters that are unfocused and not related to the position at hand or cover letters that are just a summary of a resume, they are kind of waste of space cover letters. They don't tell me anything I need to know about that candidate. A cover letter is supposed to be a way for me to get to know the candidate better than just looking at a summary of their roles on their resume. As far as cover letter length, it should definitely be one page unless instructions tell you otherwise. And it should be maybe three paragraphs, regular 11 or 12 size font. And if you can spend a couple minutes just brainstorming an experience where you demonstrated something that the employer is looking for, like for us, customer service skills or attention to detail or efficiency, and go through that experience in a few sentences, that is a great use of a cover letter. 
The other thing to do in a cover letter that you can't really do in resumes is say why you're interested in working for this company or working for this individual. So spend a few sentences. Usually it's for me the first paragraph. Now, when you say why you're interested in a role, we all know when we apply to a job, we are interested in the role to maybe be paid or to gain experience for applying to genetic counseling graduate programs. But that is not what you want to highlight. You want to highlight what you can do for the company, not what the company is going to do for you. So I read a few cover letters where people wrote, I'm planning to apply to a genetic counseling program. And in order to do that, I really need to get a genetic counseling assistant role. And that's why I'm applying. That's not impressive to read. What I rather hear is something like, I'm highly motivated to learn more about genetics and genetic counseling. And I enjoy working with customers and making sure they have the information they need. And for that reason, I was interested in applying to this GCA position. So you want to make it more about the company you're going to be serving um, rather than how that company can serve you. My final tip, tip number four, is about formatting. If you are new to writing resumes and cover letters, I recommend finding a nice cover letter and resume matching template for free online or buying one for a couple of bucks on Etsy or a similar website so that your formatting looks good. So there aren't inconsistencies in text size and font and all of those types of things. Just get a nice template going. It doesn't need to be anything too fancy or too colorful, but it can be. I do like those types of resumes and cover letters. I saw a fair number of cover letters that weren't addressed to anybody um, where the individual didn't sign off with their name or signature. So a template could be helpful to get those types of things nailed down and it also will look really nice. Finally, I like to see the resumes and cover letters saved as a PDF. Other companies might have different preferences, like some prefer Word because maybe they're going to search through the resumes for certain keywords. Again, the importance of keywords. But for me, I think things look very polished when they're sent in PDF format. Oh, I have one last tip, tip number five. If the way that you're applying to this position is through email, I saw that a lot of people just sent a blank email or an email that was really informal and attached their cover letter and their um, resume to that email. You actually, you want that email to represent you and your quality of work. As a GCA, you're going to be sending lots of emails. So to see somebody send a really informal email or just a blank email with their documents attached is something that doesn't look very desirable. You could either put your cover letter into the email, so that could be the content of the email. Make sure you include a title with correct grammar and punctuation and capitalization. So if you are applying to a position where it requests that you send all the application material to an email rather than using like a portal or something to apply, there's a few things you could do. You could either copy and paste the content of your cover letter and make that the content of the email that you're sending out as well as attaching it as a PDF. And then make sure when you title the email that the title has appropriate punctuation and capitalization and grammar. Or you could type a short little blurb. Um, Hello, hiring department at Seattle Sperm Bank. My name is Katie Lee and I'm applying to the genetic counseling assistance position. I heard about the position on Katie Lee CGC's genetic counseling channel and I'm so excited to submit my resume and my cover letter. Both documents are attached. I am very much looking forward to hearing back from you. Thank you so much, Katie Lee. A short email that's fairly formal and says that the materials attached and then include your contact information like your phone number. I know a lot of you applying to GCA positions are new to applying to these types of roles. I hope these tips were helpful and I encourage you to keep up the good work, keep on applying, and let me know down below what questions you have about applying to genetic counseling assistant roles or genetic counseling jobs. Keep up the good work, keep on applying. Your resumes and application materials are just going to get stronger and stronger and better and better with more practice and applying to more gigs. Please like this video and subscribe if you'd like more content like this. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.